Hi there, motorhome owners. Than your 2017 Ford F53 chassis motorhome, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's steering stabilizer. And this is what our steering stabilizer looks like when it's installed. It attaches to the suspension over on the passenger side, right onto our axle where the leaf spring attaches to it. And then the other end here attaches to our drag link here, or your tie rod, whichever you want to call it. And it provides us with stability in both directions, left and right, and tries to keep our steering wheel nice and straight for us. It is clamped down in this particular position here, and we can see our wheels are both straight. So you could see if we were out on the road and we go to turn to the right, when turning to the right, this bar here would actually move to the left and that would make our wheel angle towards the right and we're stretching out this spring. Once we want to return, after we're kind of done with our turn, we're straightening the motorhome back out. Normally you're pulling that wheel back straight and everything. Your caster on your suspension system might help you out a little bit, but a lot of these suspension systems on these motorhomes just really are a bear to work with. So with this stabilizer in place, as that wheel's going back, the spring's actually pulling it back for you, assisting you bringing it back straight. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to maneuver around with this on here because it's kind of helping you keep your motor home straight. And one of the biggest things you're gonna notice with this is the impacts out on the road. Um, as you're going down the road, you might hit a, a pothole or something on the road and normally your steering wheel kind of boom, it really jerks hard as that wheel dips down into that pothole. It's still going to move some with the stabilizer here, but normally after it moves, it's up to you to kind of hold that and bring it back straight. With this, the stabilizer will absorb a lot of that impact because our spring here is trying to hold it into this normal straight ahead position. And when that impact hits, the shock absorber here inside will help dampen that impact to absorb some of it so it's not transferred through our suspension straight up into the steering wheel and right to you. And then our spring will, of course, then want to go back to its normal resting position. So after you hit that pothole or dip, the wheel might move a little bit and then the stabilizer is going to really help you bring it back straight, minimizing the effort that you had to put into it at all to keep your motor home in a nice straight path going down the road. You'll also notice this when you go by any big semis or other things that have a heavy crosswind. As that crosswind goes to blow you, it's, you are going to have a little bit of a push on your motor home, but the stabilizer again wants to be straight, so it's going to assist and help keep that. And it's just going to be a lot easier for you reduce your fatigue while driving because this is going to help you and all that effort you're putting in keeping this thing straight down the road. Now your motorhome suspension is kind of a whole beast. You've got your steering and suspension components, and this is really just focused on your steering components, and it assists you in maintaining straight path down the road when you're fighting to keep all this weight and mass you know, in line in that lane. So this does a great job of things like that. But some other things that can help improve your driving conditions out there in your motorhome are suspension enhancements such as sumo springs, which will work with your existing suspension system to help absorb those impacts down the road. They take away a lot of bounces and jarring motions that you feel because they're going to absorb a lot of that impact. They also help out with sway a lot, and that's a real big one. Because while this doesn't really help reduce sway, your steering stabilizer, but it, your other suspension components can help reduce sway. Now, your steering stabilizer does help you bring that motorhome back straight, so if you got a, like a real heavy crosswind and it starts to sway and it might drift a little, that stabilizer is going to help bring it straight. But the stabilizer is not really mitigating the sway in any way. It's just helping you keep control of it. Sumo springs and sway bars from Roadmaster are all going to help reduce that sway and just make it all around easier for you and your stabilizer here to maintain control of the vehicle. All those things are also going to help extend the life of your suspension components because if, if you have more robust components, you're absorbing those impacts. It's going to remove some of the wear on the other components. And it does just overall make your motorhome feel better with those other suspension enhancements. You're not going to feel as many impacts and stuff going down the road. You're not going to sway as much, so it'll be a more comfortable ride in the cabin. And all that does add up to less fatigue when driving your motorhome because you're not having to work so hard. So this is a great step in making your job easier keeping in control of your motorhome, but the suspension enhancements that we've got available here at eTrailer will also do a great job in making your motorhome quality ride better, as well as reducing that fatigue. We'll begin our installation by parking our motorhome on a nice flat level ground. We want our steering wheels to be straight ahead. Now this install, for the most part, we kind of need to be on the ground in order to fully tighten everything down to ensure we've got it in the proper location. 
But we do have ours on a lift here, and we can start it on a lift at home. If you want to use your leveling jacks to lift it up, you can do so. Give yourself some more room to work. And you just want to make sure you put some jack stands under there to support the frame so you're not just relying on your leveling jacks. So now that we've got it lifted up in the air, we're going to go ahead and get underneath. We're just behind the front axle here. This is our passenger side leaf spring. We need to attach our bracket to the U-bolt here just behind the axle. So we're going to remove both of these nuts and washers here. They are going to be extremely tight. You're going to need some big tools to do this. So make sure you do have that prepared. We're putting some penetrant on there as well to help break up the rust and help it come off there a little bit easier. We'll be using a 1 and a 1 8 inch socket to remove these. And we're using a very big impact gun to do so. This is a one inch drive. Almost there. Now that we've got both of those removed, we can take our bracket. This bracket here, the slotted side is going to be towards the wheel on your passenger side. So we're going to go ahead and get our nuts, our washers here together because we're going to just slide this right over our U-bolt. And then we're going to take the nut and washer we just removed and we're going to put those back into place. And I like to get each one started before I tighten them down. There we go, we got them both started. I like to put a little bit of the penetrant back on there, help it run down a little easier. And we'll take our gun and tighten these back down. And then we're going to torque them down to the manufacturer's specification. You will need a pretty large torque wrench to do this. Your typical half inch drive that go up to 250 aren't going to be quite enough. We can now get our other bracket installed and that's going to install on our drag link here. So we're going to take it and it's going to be positioned on bottom, just like this, with the kind of gusset there that's supporting it, and the non-slotted hole, the round hole, facing towards the rear. So now that we see how the bracket's going to go, we'll take our U-bolt. That's going to slide through. And then on the other side here, we're going to place washers, followed by nylon locking nuts. Once we get that hole started, we'll do the same thing with the remaining two holes. And now that they're loosely installed on there, we're just gonna slide it down a little bit past center as our stabilizer is going to go between our two brackets here. We not, next, we'll grab our stabilizer and that's gonna go in place. We'll attach it to this bracket first. So I'm gonna take the bolt first and just drop it down through the top. We'll then take our stabilizer. We want the end here that says Roadmaster on it to be on this side, the passenger side. The end with the coil spring on it's going to go towards the center. So we're just going to now slide this up with our bolt down through the center. And I'm kind of resting it on my shoulder because this thing is fairly heavy uh, for what it is. That coil spring and all that on there is, is quite heavy. We'll then sliding a larger washer in place and then we're going to secure it with a nylon locking nut and this is going to be the larger bolts that come in your kit. Now that we've got that loosely installed, we'll bring our stabilizer and swing it over towards our bracket. We let this bracket loose because we do need to be able to slide it around to line it up. On this side we're going to take our bolt and our washer, drop it down through our stabilizer and then we'll push that bolt down through that bracket that we had installed in the middle. We'll then secure it with a nylon locking nut. 
So now we've got all of our hardware loosely installed. There is kind of a specific order we want to tighten it down in in order to ensure it lines up properly. So we're going to start on this side, our passenger side here, and tighten this one down. We're going to use a three quarter inch socket and wrench to do so. And then on the other side, we can snug these up some, but we don't want them to be all the way tight because this is our adjustment side where we're gonna make sure that we have it in the proper position. So we're just gonna get rid of some of this play to make it easier to adjust. And that's good enough there. That takes out most of the play, but you can see we'll still be able to adjust it. We're then gonna do the same thing with our U-bolts here. Not gonna get them all the way tight, but enough to where we can kind of slide it around still, but we get rid of all that play. For your U-bolts here, where they attach to your bracket on the drag length, we'll use a 9 16 socket or wrench. And when you're tightening these down, we wanna kinda of go back and forth to make sure that they're tightened down evenly. You can see we've got a little more thread sticking out here on the back than we do on this side here than the ones closer to us. So we're gonna snug this one up a little more trying to keep those th thread lengths about the same. So that's pretty good right there. We've got most of the slack out of it. At this point, we just wanna double check to make sure that our steering wheel is facing completely forward because this is going to determine the proper position here. Also, if you're working at home and you've got your leveling jacks, holding your motor home up, that does change the geometry of your suspension. So before you, you fully tighten these down on this side, we're going to bring the motor home back down, get it on the ground, and then double check that steering wheel, make sure it's straight. Then we'll roll back under here with our creeper to finish tightening these up because it really does need to be down and loaded with this wheel straight to get the proper location where this needs to attach to your drag link. So we're here in the motorhome, we're just checking the wheel here to make sure that it is still straight because if your wheel's cocked to the side like this, we've got the one bracket that doesn't move on the U-bolt for our leaf springs over there and the one on our drag link is where we're going to clamp it down. And whenever we clamp it down, that stabilizer is going to be in its normal position. It's always going to want to try to return to that position. So if your wheel's cocked like this and you tighten it down, that spring's always going to try to bring your wheel back to that cocked position. So that's why it's really important that you double check yourself, make sure that wheel is nice and straight. And then we're going to head back down now and we can finish tightening it up. So we're back on the ground now underneath your stabilizer. Sometimes you need to lift up on it because we do want it to be parallel with our drag link here. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of upward pressure and then we'll finish snugging these down. And then we can go back and torque those. You may have to switch to a deep well socket in order to get enough length uh, past all the threads of the U-bolts. Now that we've got that one torqued, we'll finish tightening up this bolt here. I like to save this one till after those because when you tighten this one down, sometimes it takes this bracket and it cocks it sideways a little bit on you. So we'll just finish snugging and torquing that one. And then the one that we had tightened down over on the other side, we can also go back and torque that one once we've finished this one here. And now with everything torqued down, that'll complete our installation. We're ready to take it out and go for a little test drive. You do wanna take it out on some straight roads and verify that it doesn't seem to be pulling to the left or to the right. If it's pulling to the left or to the right, it's more than likely due to this being tightened down in the wrong location. For example, if you get out on the road, it seems like it's drifting a little bit to the right. When you get back into your shop or back into your driveway, with your wheel straight again, you wanna take this loose. If it doesn't kind of pop or move by itself to center it, then you might want to take your steering wheel and move it to the opposite direction, just ever so slightly of the way that it was pulling. So if it was pulling right, we're going to give it just a little bit to the left and then re-snug it back down and then go for that test drive again. 
if everything's nice and straight, your installation's complete and you can enjoy a much easier cruise on the highway in your motorhome with your new stabilizer. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's steering stabilizer on our 2017 Ford F53 chassis motorhome.